What's up guys, welcome back to Among the Fence and thank you for joining me on another Request Wednesday. My name is Aaron and today we're going to be checking out the album When the Kite String Pops by the band Acid Bath. And if you have anything you want me to review, new or old or album, EP, whatever, go ahead and let me know what it is down in the comments below and maybe it'll be featured on an upcoming Request Wednesday. Actually, it, it, it probably will be. Acid Bath is a sludgy, doomy metal band from Louisiana. They started in 91 and they only lasted six short years to 97. And I believe it's because one of their band members died. I could be wrong. I didn't go like super in depth on their history. So I'm not really sure why they're not around anymore. But in those six short years, they did come out with two albums. And the first one, their debut album being When the Kite String Pops. And first thing I noticed when listening to these guys is there's a huge huge Black Sabbath influence in this and there's like some Alice in Chains and but yeah it's mostly just a very prominent Black Sabbath influence when listening to these guys. I would say that this influence is very prominent in the first song on the album, The Blue. The intro has this slow, thick, groovy kind of intro. It reminds me of like War Pigs a little bit but then the verse picks up the pace a little bit then it slows back down and it goes back and forth between that a few times and the guitar tone is fantastic. The vocals are just as good as specifically the clean vocals. I enjoyed them quite a bit throughout this entire album. The distorted vocals are kind of hit or miss, but they work really well in the song. They're kind of abrasive in the blue, but there's like this creepiness to it because it's like they're distorted and they're yelled, but they're almost like a whisper and the lyrics are kind of psychotic too, which is just, yeah, it's pretty dark. The second song and probably the more user-friendly song on this album, Tranquilized, Starts out with this fuzzy guitar riff effect. And I believe that the song is about the feelings of being numb after a night of partying. There's a little bit more rock influence in this song. And I believe that's what makes it more... It's just easier to jump right into this album if you just listen to this song first. It's a good warm up. And it's got a little bit more of like a Alice in Chains vibe to it than it does Black Sabbath which I feel like helps out a little bit more too. Uh, the lyrics are creative and kind of kind of funny at times. The vocals are mesmerizing and the song does a good job at having like a linear process of you know the first half of the song is about partying and then once you get to the bridge it slows way down and it does a good job at portraying that numb tranquilized feeling after the party. It's got a sexy guitar solo my only complaint about this song is the vocals and the outro. They just keep lulling and it's it's a bit much. It's kind of, I mean, it kind of makes you feel like you're hungover, I guess, in a way. It's just, yeah, it's, it's a bit much. And the song Cheap Vodka is about a guy who goes out and starts committing violent crimes because he got too drunk and he just figures things don't matter anymore and he might as well just do it before his life is over. Um, I might sound a little stupid for saying this. I feel like this song has kind of a hardcore punk vibe to it, which I enjoyed quite a bit, specifically in the drums, which stood out to me more. And like, they're not over the top flashy and they're not really anything like that standout-ish, but I enjoyed them quite a bit. Uh, this song does have some kind of awkward transitions, which I find that to be the case in a lot of these songs on this album, just going from verses to choruses. It's a little wonky at times. And the song Jezebel, which is about abusing and killing a prostitute. This song is really, I, I enjoyed the rhythm in it. There's some pretty cool syncopations and just overall musically, it's just a really good haunting sound to this song. It makes you feel pretty uneasy and it, it was a little hard to get into this song just because of how brutally explicit the details are in it. It's kind of like listening to a Cannibal Corpse song. But when you listen to Cannibal Corpse, you kind of expect it, and the music is super hard and intense. But Acid Bath kind of slows things down, and musically, it's not that abrasive. It's pretty digestible, musically. So when they start singing about these horrible things, it I don't know, it's like, it's like seeing a murder happen in broad daylight. It just feels uncomfortable. It's like it's supposed to happen at nighttime, and that's kind of how this feels. It feels like... Everything in this album, like they're not hiding it and it's easy to hear. The song Tababu Kumi, I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's French for land of white cannibals. And I believe it's a political reference specifically from the lyrics that I found in it. And I believe, 
I think it's referencing to the fact that the government is made up of mostly just old white men. Uh, the song starts out pretty aggressive and slows down for the choruses. The drums stand out quite a bit more, and even though they're pretty simple, I feel like they carry the song musically. The song is also more prominently distorted vocals over cleans. They pop up here and there, but the cleans don't really have a whole lot of breakthrough moments until the end. And the song God Machine, which is about the loss of individuality and intellect due to religious beliefs. I believe it's mostly Catholic, possibly. I feel like, I feel like this band has a lot more interaction with the Catholic Church, so I feel like a lot of their stuff is directed more towards that. The drums and guitar in God Machine, I mean, they sound like freaking gunfire. And the vocals seem like they sit behind the mix a little bit, but I think it's just because of how aggressive the music is. The vocals have a harder time cutting through. And I didn't really enjoy God Machine that much, but the more I listened to it, the more I kind of just fell in love with it musically. I mean, I love the drum tone and I love the rapid fire riff. The song Finger Painting of the Insane. It's, uh, <laughs> just imagine a psychotic murderer finger painting and you kind of get the gist of the song. I mean, it, it could fit right in on any Cannibal Corpse album just because of how grotesque it is. It's got a super chuggy guitar riff. It makes it really unsettling. Uh, the vocals, the clean vocals in this are a little shaky and it makes it, again, pretty unsettling. The chorus is very heavy and has a solid rhythm to it. The one thing that stood out to me the most in this and probably the, the darkest part of this song is the way how the distorted vocals come in and <laughs> they kind of like back up the clean vocals in a way, but it kind of shows like signs of schizophrenia a little bit within this person's mind. It's just an all around dark song. The song Dr. Seuss is Dead isn't really about the death of Dr. Seuss, but it's more of a metaphor referring to the death of influence and creativity. And it's kind of about people just not getting out and doing things and staying home and watching TV and being on the internet. And even though this album came out in 94, I feel like it's only become worse nowadays. Even though we're all connected through social media, I feel like we're actually a lot more isolated than ever before, even without the pandemic. Uh, the song is kind of a slow burn. It's got like a constant ting from the drums going throughout it, which kind of, it, it's a bit much. Once the song picks up, it becomes pretty insane, which is also kind of, it's just a sonically difficult song to listen to like the first couple of times you get through it. And then the more you listen to it, you kind of accept it for the way how it sounds, but it's still, it's just hard to really just grasp and enjoy. I mean, it's got a cool breakdown in the outro. It's pretty heavy. It's just kind of repetitive musically and vocally, which is kind of a weird thing to say on Acid Bath because most of these songs they're kind of progressive in a sense. In the song Scream of the Butterfly, which is taken from the 1965 movie of the same name, and it's kind of a ballady song. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's got amazing vocals and really great creative lyrics that have a lot of metaphors in it, but starting out, it reminds me a little bit of like Red Hot Chili Peppers, maybe like Soul to Squeeze or something like that. Like if Red Hot Chili Peppers decided to make Stoner Rock, this would this would probably be it. The twangy guitar in this song sounds absolutely fantastic with the fat, thick bass line that's playing behind it. It's a really pretty song considering the context. And even though in other songs I mentioned how the drum work is a little bit simpler but it carries the song, the same thing happens in this but the drum fills in it are just so good. They're just so good. And when they stand out, you're just like, whoa, that, I mean, it just stands out a lot more and the vocals are very powerful and carry a lot of weight. It's mostly all clean vocals, but just pushing the story along, they do a great job. Mortician's Flame starts out with a really sexy bass line that's joined by a guitar, then the guitar cuts out for the verses. There's like a constant buildup in the verse. It works really well once it hits the chorus, which is super heavy. And I'd say this song has probably the best transition <laughs> between sections of the song out of all the songs on this album. 
the vocals are also pushed a little bit more and they seem to be a little bit more on edge. There's quite a bit higher than all the other songs. They still sound great, but it's nice to hear the vocalist doing something a little bit different. I would say that this song is a contender for best riff on the album. My only complaint is that it is a little bit drawn out. It's a pretty long song. Another song that has absolutely killer riffs is What Color Is Death? It's got fast driving music and just it's incredibly quick. In fact, I feel like the vocals have a hard time keeping up with this song until we hit the chorus. It's got like a unique guitar solo in it as well compared to all the other songs. It's got like a tremolo and like a wah effect going on. And it transitions into a really cool riff as well. The lyrics are kind of sweet, but also kind of cruel at times. The song makes it like, it kind of goes one way or another. Like they're very dark lyrics, but at the same time, they're, like I said, they're kind of sweet and kind of, uh, kind of weird. One of the songs I didn't enjoy that much was The Bones of Baby Dolls, which is kind of a ballad -y acoustic song. The guitar work sounds fantastic, and the vocals are kind of what turned me off. There's like this weird wobbly effect on them, which I didn't enjoy all that much. The guitar sound with the vocal effect, though, does remind me quite a bit of Cemetery Gates. It's just the vocal effect. It's just a bit much for like an acoustic song, and it's very prominent throughout the whole song all the way up until the end. And again, it's just so drawn out. It's such for for its purpose and its theme, it doesn't need to be six minutes long. It's just, it's so much. Another song I didn't like all that much was Dope Fiend, which is about a self-aware drug addict. And it kind of takes the viewpoints from two different people, from the drug addict who's like, just kind of okay with what they're doing. And the person who's like, hey, why don't you just quit doing that? Why don't you just stop? And while this is one of the more simpler songs on this album, it does do a good job at making you want to get up and mosh around. The lyrics just aren't that well written, I feel like. It feels a little bit more lazy. The transitions in this one are probably the wonkiest out of all the songs. And again, it just felt, it just felt very drawn out. The closing song on the album, Casey Eats Cockroaches, which is another cannibal corpse kind of style song that would fit in right in with all their albums it's about having intercourse with a woman killing her and then not stopping continuing to have intercourse with her really nice way of finishing off an album uh, the song opens up with a quote from a clockwork orange which is also appropriate the riff is really good but it's kind of simple and again reminds me a little bit too much of of Dope Fiend. I feel like with this song in there, they could have just taken Dope Fiend out and it just, it would have worked all the same. Uh, the chorus has a quote from a movie called Blue Velvet, which I've never heard before. And it just kind of sounds a little weird in its placement. The second riff is actually really good and it changes quite a bit. One of my favorites on the album leaves it a lot of room to breathe. And I feel like it kind of helps it be a little bit more of a climax for the album. I enjoyed this album quite a bit. Like back in back in 94, I feel like bands were trying really, really hard to achieve what When the Kite String Pops did. I mean, it's just so simple and they do it with so much ease too. Like the music isn't way over the top. Like I said, it's not like a technical death metal sound but these lyrics are just so dark and the music and its simplicity is it, it just fits the whole atmosphere it's so uneasy the whole time you listen to this album there's not like a point where you know, like there's no lightheartedness to it it's just all heaviness in terms of just the atmosphere the themes the music all around it just doesn't it doesn't let up for one second my only complaint about when the kite stream pops and it was actually mentioned by the person who requested it is it's long it is a long album it's an hour and nine minutes when some of you are like you know that's not that long of an album and i'll agree an hour and nine minutes it's it's long for an album but it's not like really pushing it like tools fear inoculum i think is like an hour and 20 or something like that but i mean this album feels long most of these songs are like six minutes long and there's not a whole lot of variety within those six minutes like there's one song on here that's two minutes. 
like two songs that are four, one song that's maybe five, and the rest are six and over. And you you feel it. And you'll notice that I mentioned that in quite a bit of these songs, I said that the only downfall of them is that they were drawn out. And that's the case with a lot of these songs. When I listened to this the first time all the way through, it felt long. And then every time after that, it just seemed like it got longer and longer and longer. And it was, it was a struggle to make it through to actually conceptualize how I actually feel about this and give it a rating that I feel like it deserves. So with all that said, I got to give When the Kite Stream Pops by Acid Bath a 7.3 out of 10. Musically, Acid Bath does just about everything right in this album. If you're a fan of stoner or sludge or doom metal or anything like that, I mean, this is it, especially for the time that this came out. I feel like bands almost 20 years later are having a hard time doing what these guys did, having a hard time achieving the sound and this overall feeling and atmosphere that Acid Bath was able to achieve which seems like they did it very easily. Just my only gripe with it is I feel like they have an album and a half right here instead of a full album. I feel like they went with the approach where more is more when in fact they could have done a lot more with less and just cut it up and maybe came out with an EP with most of these songs on it instead of 14 songs that you know, over an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. But I want to know what you guys think. If you've listened to Acid Bath before, go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know what you thought. If you haven't, go ahead and listen to a couple songs. If you listen to the whole album, I mean, kudos to you. And go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know what you would rate it. And if you enjoyed this review, don't forget to give it a like. Let me know what I should review next. Don't forget to subscribe or the little bell icon. That way you get notified and you don't miss out on any of my future reviews. Especially if you leave a request, which happens kind of more often than, than I would like. And I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day or night. Whenever you have me watching this, and I will talk to you next time.